Hey YouTube, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another unboxing. Um, I reported out in August after the DC pen show that I had decided not to buy a particular fountain pen and it still weighed on my head and in my mind and I went ahead and decided to pull the trigger. So I've got that pen today. Um, so I want to do a quick um, reveal of that. I've already unpackaged the, the pen and got rid of the box uh, just to get rid of some of the clutter. Additionally, I got um, start, the start of some of my planner stuff for FY24 and what has come so far from Sterling Inc. And the common planner, I've got that as well. So I want to open up those two things. So let's just push these things to the side and we'll do the Sterling Inc. piece first. Um, I've got more coming from Sterling Inc., but she's just getting stuff in, and I just think it's going to take her a little bit of time to uh, get everything in. So I've got her freebie um, sticker collection here, and then her beautiful card that she has here. I absolutely love her little cards. So well done with a little thank you note. And that is her website address if anybody is interested. Let me get that to focus in. If anybody's interested in going to the Sterling Inc. channel, she still has some things available. So if you haven't um, made up your mind but you're thinking about getting the Common Planner, you might want to get to getting because it is already October uh, by the time this video <laughs> will be up. So things are going to start to be completely sold out. And I got... Um, and she got my correction right. So this, um, I ordered um, a passport size notebook for 2024, which I'm really looking forward to keeping in my everyday carry. Um, and I got the one, I don't like the vertical weeklies. I just find that they don't have enough um, space in them. And it's just too tiny already in a book that's really, really tiny. Wow, this is very tightly fit. Um, but this is the passport size and I got the horizontal. I have a little bit more space and I could probably split it as I see fit within the, within the rows of each one. And plus you get paper in the back. So that is what that looks like. I was going to go ahead and get the traditional traveler's notebook. And then I remembered that I did order something in from her. So I'm using this one. Um, and then you've got a lot of Tomo River dot grid paper um, as well in the back. So I'm looking forward to like just throwing that in for um, my smaller EDC carry bags that I have. I'm going to just put that to the side. Okay, so the latest and greatest also, I went to Ginny Bick and DC and in October, if I don't do it in October, in November, I think I'm going to do a series on utilizing different fountain pen friendly papers. I've had some of these, like this one from Yamato, which still had the original old and tried and true Tomo River paper. Um, I want to do that one with the paper testing sheets. And then I've got this new Takumi paper that I saw at Ginny Bick that I've never saw before. Um, so I'm going to try to do a comparison of writing on different types of fountain pen, fountain pen friendly paper. Um, but I'm trying to get this one cut down to size and put into two books. So um, stay tuned for that. I'll keep you posted on that as I can figure out how I can get this bound up because I don't want to waste a whole sheet. Um, I, I think I can get not necessarily something bound like this onion skin paper from Remy Road, but something that I can get bound in some kind of fashion so that I can kind of have two different sizes. I want to actually take this very large A4 and cut it in half. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do. All right. So there's the latest news on that. And one other news update. I know I keep saying I'm going to do my art stuff. I do have a new art tool kit. This one has gouache in it. And I'm waiting for some more gouache to come because I have many pans that are very empty. So I need a few more colors anyhow. So I will be doing a video update on that and then I will do my watercolor palette and my gouache palette in a future video. So again, stay tuned. 
Um, if you're new to the channel, this is what I do. I talk about fountain pens a lot, stationery a lot, and occasionally some art stuff thrown in. Um, so if you like this kind of content, feel free to smash and hit that like button and please subscribe. All right, so I passed on this at the DC Pen Show because I didn't see a the way that I wanted to see the pen and they were running out of nibs like crazy. I have two existing um, pens from Estabrook and one of them I think I still have in my holder. Hold on, just as I was saying, I have two pens from Estabrook and um, Estes. I actually have three Estabrook pens total. I have one that I'm considering um, getting rid of, which is this um, Estabrook Junior Special Edition Macchiato pen. Um, I'm thinking about getting rid of that one just because I don't find myself leaning towards it, but I did upgrade the nib so the writing experience is much better than the extra fine nib on this one. But it's a very thin pen. Um, and I'm finding since I've had hand surgery that the it's just a little bit too thin for me. Um, but it's a great pen uh, to write with, but it is a smaller one. So uh, last year I bought the Sea Glass Estabrook pen and I absolutely love this pen. I put on this one the journaler's nib that I had and took the other nib unit off that I was writing with last month in August. So this one has the um, journaler's nib, uh, the specialty grind from Estabrook. And I, my very first Estabrook was this one, which is the Rocky Top. And it had the journaler's nib on it, but I took the nib off, moved it over to the um, sea glass one. And in this one, I got the scribe nib at the DC Pin Show. That's what I ended up settling for at the DC Pin Show because a lot of the Estabrooks were actually gone by the time I got around to the Estabrook table. And I have been writing with this pen with um, Robert Oster African Gold. And it is absolutely a fun pen to write with. And I'll show you what I have currently inked in the month of September. It's going to change again in October, but some of these will carry over. And I've been writing with this Estabrook SD in the African Gold. And it's just been a really phenomenal color and experience. And so, um, my currently inked, I also put this out on Instagram um, as well, if you want to see the post on my Pins and Paint 3 on Instagram. But I have a new one, and the new pen from Estabrook, very excited about this. Classic box, classic company, nice fabric cover for their pin cases. And this one, ta-da! Okay, so you get the card to, you know, charge and activate your warranty. And then I ended up getting, because I could not get it off of my, my brain, cartridge, is the Botanical Garden. And I got this one in oversize, and it is stunning. And I wanted palladium. I didn't want gold because my other ones are gold finish. These two are already gold finish, so... Now I've got three Estabrook Estes. I'm a very happy compa. Um, so there's this one in silver, and then the other two are in gold finish. And as you can see, it's just slightly a little bit bigger than the Estes regular, and the grip is a little bit wider as well. Uh, let's see here. So this is a little bit wider as well. So let me just do this. And my nib for this one sorry, I'm just trying to get this to come in focus, is an elastic fine. So I've got another kind of specialty oriented nib. And today I'm going to just dip it in. I'm going to actually ink it next month in October. I'm shooting this like almost on the very last day of September. Um, and I'm going to use, put this back. I am going to pull out my Tomo River paper. And the ink that I want to use is Autumn in Auburn by Ferris Wool Press. I think it's a beautiful color. It will, oh, I'm glad I did not have that uncapped. It will bring out all the like gold tones of this pen. And it's becoming 
very fall like here. So let me just go ahead and put my sea glass away and zip up that case. Um, the gold one is in place, so I'm going to leave that one there. Let me first actually, so I do not knock this over. I'm not going to write with this pen post it. It, it fits really well in hand as an oversize. It's got really nice weight to it uninked. I'm sure with ink in it, it'll just feel even more pleasant. And I'm going to try the Elastic Fine. I'm not even going to flush the nib. I'm just going to go ahead and go for it just to see what it feels like with this Ferris Wheel Press ink. So Okay, the nib is still, um, it's still uh, stiff. It's not a, doesn't have a lot of give, but it has enough. Wow, I really do love Autumn and Auburn ink um, from Ferris Wheel Press. It's just got really nice shading. Let's just do it like that. Really nice writing experience though. Very smooth, like it. So let me just bring that in so that you guys can see it. Sorry, my hands are still getting in the way. Let me put this cap on and the ink down so I don't um, fumble it because of the dressing that I have on my hand. It's like saran wrap for wounds. Let's see here. So that is, that is Autumn and Auburn. It's just a really beautiful color. Oh yeah, I'm gonna look forward to like having that inked up in October. So yeah, this pen writes stunning. It's very good. It's got good shading. And I'm really glad to have an oversized because that's the one thing that was missing from my Estabrook collection was having that ability to have an oversized pen. I was just one, really wanting a larger one just to see what it was like. And I'm absolutely loving this grip section down here. It's very comfortable. So that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, let me know. If you guys have a combination of Estabrook Estes, let me know that as well. Which one is your favorite? Do you have one favorite over the other? I really do like the fact that I have all these different kinds of nibs versus the standard fine, extra fine, medium, and broad. And I'm just really enjoying my collection. So happy to have it. Thank you so much for stopping by. And until next time, stay safe. Bye.